In a short video series, we're going to describe how to take a requirements model in Cameo and use it to generate custom documents with text, images, and tables in a format of your design. We're going to do this with the Cameo Report Wizard tool and Apache VTL code. But why use Cameo Report Wizard? By automatically creating documents from your models, the Report Wizard will save your organization time and improve the quality of your work by reducing errors. Report Wizard provides three primary advantages. First, it enables automated version creation. If data is updated in the model, it can be used to regenerate a version of the document that reflects these changes. Second, whether initial release or Rev Z, you can be assured that your data reflects the source of truth and that copying errors will not plague your customer deliveries. Most importantly, you can use reusable templates to standardize and expedite specification creation across subsystems, systems, and your entire organization, greatly reducing the amount of time spent on report generation. Let's take a quick look at a process overview. You used to spend a lot of time manually populating your documents, reviewing for accuracy, and then still finding errors later on that cause you to drive a revision. This was slow. Now, with the report wizard in your template file, you can automatically populate these documents as fast as data creation will allow, and then rest knowing that what you deliver matches the latest and greatest. Now, on to the tutorial. To create a model that can generate a document from the model using VTL, uh, we'll assume that you start with a basic model, something like this, that has both requirements and system architecture. From here, we're going to create packages uh, to define, to add to the model, to uh, create a requirement stereotype um, and include document information. So the first thing we're going to do is to create packages for the stereotype and document information. Now we're going to create a wizard requirement stereotype that extends the extended requirement stereotype um, and supports attribute output using VTO. Uh, so we're going to create a wizard requirement profile. Every uh, new stereotype should have its own profile. From here, we're going to create a profile diagram. Uh, if not enabled, you may need to uh, change from standard to expert. Now we have this. Uh, we're going to pull in existing requirement types just for visualization. So these two stereotypes already exist in the models requirement and extended requirement. And we're going to create a new requirement. Uh, stereotype called wizard requirements. If I display relationships, you can see an extended requirement is a subtype of requirement. We're going to make wizard requirement a subtype of extended requirement. So now wizard requirement has every attribute of requirement and extended requirement and is a subclass of that type of element. Uh, now we're going to add uh, properties to the wizard requirement. Uh, we need a property called object type. This object type property uh, will allow us to uh, sort our requirement elements by, uh, by what type they are, if they're headings, requirements, objectives, or just supporting information. Within this profile, we're now going to create an enumeration that's going to define the possible uh, value types for an object type. And after we've created the enumeration, we're going to start creating uh, enumeration literals. So first will be a requirement. There's a, using this control S shift E shortcut there. Requirement objective, we're going to want uh, a heading as well. Uh, 
And if I was to pull this in, I could also create a literal this way. So I'm now going to type my attribute with the enumeration literal. And that uh, will allow us for every element typed with wizard requirement for us to specify an object type. Attribute. Object type is the only attribute we will need for this demonstration. So now that we have the stereotype, we will move on to adding the report profile to the model. Adding the report profile to the model uh, allows you to add special types of elements that support the VTL and report wizard tool. So to enable the report profiles, we're going to go to file, use project, use local project. And we're going to navigate to install root profiles. And within here, we're going to look for the report profile. Just finish. Now we can see that the report profile is added to the model. And we'll just go ahead and uh, now hide the auxiliary resources. With the report profile added, we can now create report data elements. Uh, these report data elements uh, will take together variables from across the model and allow you to insert um, custom properties into your document. So we're going to create element. And now you can see, in addition to general, we have this report profile. We're going to add a report data. And we're going to call this specification. From here, we're going to create variables. So create element, variable. And our first one that we're going to do is call is title. And then we're going to set it equal to uh, the name of the document that we want it to have. Now we'll do a few additional variables. First, we'll do author for the author of the document. Next, we will do uh, system overview diagram, which will allow us to specify a specific diagram uh, to add to the front matter of the document. Then we will uh, specify the requirement package. This will be work behind the scenes for us to specify uh, which package the requirements are in. Uh, it's especially useful if you have a model with many different uh, multiple packages uh, for different specifications. Uh, next is the rev, which is just the rev, of the rev version of the document. And then finally, we'll specify uh, where our verification matrix table is. We'll leave these variables blank for now, but we'll uh, work on populating those as we complete our model. Uh, now we're going to refactor our existing requirements to use the new stereotype uh, that we created uh, just a minute ago. So right now you can see the existing requirements are all extended requirement types. Uh, they have uh, requirement text, they have an ID, and they have a verify method. Uh, but we need to uh, make them more a more specific type to allow us to specify that object type. So we're going to convert it to more specific. And you'll see down here, our wizard requirement is available. Um, they get just the general uh, class image, but they are still of the requirement type. Now we're going to go to our requirements diagram, and we're going to add a couple columns. Uh, first, we'll add the verify method. and We'll just check that we have verification methods for each of our requirements. If you don't, um, I recommend you go ahead and do this. And then we will also uh, we'll go to select columns. We'll search for object type, which comes from our new uh, from our new stereotype. And you'll see that none of them are populated. So we're going to go through each of our requirement objects and give them the appropriate object type. So the first is quite clearly a heading. 
as well as flight modes, which is a heading. Our next requirement is attack mode. Uh, describes uh, what the system must do in flight. And that's going to be a requirement, as well as cruise mode. But mode overview really is just an additional description of how those two need to interact. Uh, it doesn't have a shout statement. Uh, so this is really supporting info. And then situational awareness is a heading. It doesn't have any child requirements or sub requirements yet. Uh, next is the interface requirements section. It has a single requirement in it. And then we have a couple more headings. We have another requirement. Now we have our, uh, and then finally we have our final section, which is a heading. Uh, but then we have our first objective. We see uh, our objective statement is T70 shall produce print thousand. That's we can do a little bit of editing here and make that a should statement. Make that a little more clear. And then requirement. And finally, a one to one requirement. So here we go. We've updated all of our requirements to use this object type, which will support um, to create a model reading the various macros and functions from the model using VT and the VTL. Uh, we'll assume that you start with. A basic model. If your requirements like were not already set up, both requirements use heading and heading sections. From here, we're going to recommend that you uh, to organize your requirements to into the model uh, to sections and headings uh, that create a requirement stereotype organized and include in document information. As you can see in the example output, our uh, our package becomes the overall heading for the section, but then each requirement header becomes uh, moves between heading levels and subsequent heading levels and is then followed by the requirements and supporting info and objectives and any trace diagrams that are within that sec within that section. So ultimately, your document will be organized according to how your model is organized. Uh, so that way we have our headings and requirements organized. We're going to uh, create our verification matrix table. Now we're going to create a smart package that filters our elements down to the requirements and objectives. So I'll go search for smart package. And we'll call this uh, verified objects. Uh, now we're going to create query that finds all of those objects and places them in the smart package. So we're going to use uh, the find to look for anything that is a wizard requirement. We are going to set the scope using the tree to be requirements. And finally, we'll check that the object type property is of type requirement. We'll call this find requirement. Now we need to uh, redo or do that again to look for the objective so that we get all the items that we're interested in including in our verification matrix. Finally. Now, object type, the only difference in this query is going to be for this time, object type is going to be set to objective. We'll call this find objective. Last but not least, we need to create a union of these two. And that will be the result of our query. And you can see all of the requirement elements from that package that are both thresholds, uh, both requirements and objectives are included in the smart package. Now we can create our verification matrix diagram. So we'll create a requirement table, call it verification 
matrix. And we'll just set the scope to the smart package that we created. Now we only have the elements that are of the wizard requirement uh, stereotype and have uh, in our uh, the object type with requirement or objective. And we will just, for visualization, show the verify method and be all good there. Now we're going to, in the variable, we're going to uh, set the value of this variable to be the name of the table that we just created. So we'll call it verification matrix. And later on, uh, our uh, velocity template will look for this table when printing the verification matrix table into the document. Last but not least, we're going to create the front matter information for the document. So to store that, we'll just create a new package. We'll call this uh, text elements. And in there, in text elements, we'll create a new diagram. Uh, and we're going to use a glossary table. And we'll call this document overview. In here, we're going to create uh, a new element. We'll call this uh, document overview. And we'll create a brief description of what the specification is. So this is a performance specification for the T70 system. Obviously, you can expand on that as much as you want. Then we could add a couple others. We'll go with system overview. And I uh, will create, uh, we'll, we'll say this, uh, the T70 is a next generation star fighter. Lastly, we're just going to trace the system overview to our system block diagram. So if I go to the specification for this term, I can go to relations, create an outgoing relation. I'm going to choose trace this flexibility. We'll do any element so we can pick up diagrams. Under system, I'm going to pick the T70 system description. And with that, uh, we have set up all the data we need in our model uh, to produce our system document. We've got our document overview and basic text. Uh, we have our requirements, which have our new attributes for object type, uh, which will allow us to sort our document. Uh, there, here's our stereotype, which allows that. The system description has already been created. Uh, and we have some variables, which we will update in our next episode, uh, which describes creating the velocity template uh, that will call all this information in the model to produce the final specification document. Uh, thank you for going along with me, and I'll see you in the next video.